All right, good evening, everyone, and, and welcome to our uh, January uh, PTSA meeting. And for the for this meeting, it's going to be one of our special meetings. This is uh, a meeting where we have the uh, some of our alumni to come back and share their experiences during their first semester in college. We're very excited to hear from our alumni. And before we get started on that, I'd just like to go through the format. We'll go through some principal updates and then um, we'll go from there. Just a moment here as we get everyone into the room. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our January meeting. I just realized I didn't have everyone in the room uh, when I uh, welcomed everyone. So we're very pleased to have you here this evening uh, to join us for our January PTSA meeting where we're having our special um, annual alumni panel. Um, this is an opportunity for some of our alumni to come back and share their experiences with us um, so we can hear how their first semesters went and we're looking forward to hearing from them. So before we get started, I wanna just go through um, the format of the evening. We're gonna to go to some principal updates and then we'll move into breakout rooms and I'll share the breakout um, room, slight, there were two rooms slight, uh, shortly um, and we'll go from there. So uh, after the principal updates, I'll share a slide that I have with the breakout rooms. Um, we'll ask that our alumni go to the rooms listed and then for our um, visitors tonight, you can, you're can you welcome to select a room. Um, you can change rooms if you would like at any time. So, um, and we are recording um, in both rooms so that we can share the recordings to those that were not able to make it this evening. So, um, so before we get to the, the main part of our program this evening, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Doug Nelson for any principal updates. Thank you, Brian, I really appreciate it. Nice to be with you all this evening. And for those who are MCPS connected, our snow day for today. Hope you had a surprise morning where you got a little extra time um, just to do something that was fun and a little more relaxing. Um, so I do have a few updates just to provide to everyone this evening. I'm gonna start with one that is particularly important this time of year, um, but it is course registration time. So I do not wanna miss an opportunity to make sure that I pass along to students and parents alike, that this is a very important time in which decisions uh, that are made for next year have a lot of important impact, not only to make sure that students have the opportunity to really work with their counselor on mapping out what is going to be a year long experience in courses, both in the first and in the second semester, but also that we stay um, on timeline because there are some there's impact to making those course selections, being that that is how we also staff the school. So just a couple of reminders, if there are still some decisions that you need to make, please make those decisions to our current students sooner rather than later. I also wanna encourage you if you have any questions or if you just need to clarify anything to please reach out to your counselor directly so that we can get those done in a timely fashion. Um, but this is an important time of year as we're getting prepared to move into the next academic school year. So thank you for your attention to getting those course requests made so that we can plan appropriately. I also wanted to share a little reminder, and this will be in my plan for my community update going into next week. It is almost the end of semester one. And so we are in kind of that final push to make sure that we get successfully through semester one and into semester two for students and parents. Again, this sometimes there is a needed plan to make sure that you fully wrap up the class that you are currently in. Sometimes you will stay with that same teacher. Sometimes you're going to have a new teacher in semester two. So it is important to finish strong and to wrap up that first semester well. So there's gonna be some advice that I communicate home over this weekend, please pay attention to that. Um, but additionally, students have been able to see their second semester schedules in Synergy. That has been out for some time. So to parents, if you've not had a chance to check in with your child and make sure that you've gone over, um, this is the time to do that in case there is any, again, specific requests that you need to go back to your child's counselor, this is the time to do that. 
I wanted to share with everyone in one of the updates uh, this month that I communicated home. Uh, we have done some important work in our campaign around No Place for Hate. I think that that is important to continue to elevate and to continue to define our focus and working with ADL and around that school-based program to confront hate, hate and bias in school. So we had an opportunity to do a lesson this past uh, month in December, and then staff and students alike have been signing the No Place for Hate pledge, which is really important. And there's a great image of kind of where we have put that in our school um, to show our commitment, to make sure that we stand for what is right and to confront hate and bias. Um, and the last thing I just wanna pass along to everyone, and this kind of falls under the umbrella of safety. One is I just wanna to say to all of our students and staff that are coming in, please make sure that you're safe tomorrow. It's gonna to be very cold and very frigid. And so please make sure that you bundle up and make sure you have a safe trip into school. And I also want to uh, share with everyone, of course, I think many of you are aware we, of course, had a second bomb threat that was called into our school on Friday, which is very unfortunate. Um, but when we get back to school, that hit at a pretty interesting time, considering that it was around dismissal. So when we come back and school is back in function, again, um, as principal, I just really look forward to getting our OSET together to debrief that experience to make sure that we continue to improve in our practices in that regard. Um, but I've gotten a questions from parents about that, and yet we still need to get back together at the school level in order to kind of really debrief everything that took place on Friday. So I look forward to getting started with that sooner rather than later tomorrow. So those are my four updates this evening. And so Brian, I'll throw it back to you. All right, great. Thank you, Mr. Nelson, for those updates. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. You'll see a slide and it'll have the breakout rooms. I ask that the uh, our alumni go into those rooms and then our Guests for this evening can pick which room that they would they would like to go into. Okay, and if somebody can let me confirm that they can see the screen. You could see it, Brian. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the breakout rooms. Um, thank you all for joining this evening. Uh, feel free at the end of the session to, uh, to, to drop off, um, but do feel free during the evening if you wish to switch rooms, you can do so. All right, here we go. And thank you uh, alumni for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. And Jen, I'm just confirming you're going to one, I'm going to two. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And for those in the in the main room, if you need help getting into the breakouts, let me know and I'm I'm happy to help. in just a moment. So you just take a moment. We'll give a few more seconds for people to arrive. All right, I think that might be most of our individuals who are joining the Rockstar Breakout Room 2. I just want to say thank you to everyone for being here, for those alumni who are coming back to share their experience with parents and students, and for everybody who is joining to hear from our alumni. I just kind of want to center us in the framing about why this session, I think, is really value added and why it's important that you're here. And before I get into that, just a hello to everyone. My name is Doug Nelson. I'm principal of Wooten High School, but for about the next 45 minutes, I am your facilitator. So I'm gonna put my like best Oprah hat on and I'm gonna try to like make this very interesting for all of us. Okay, so a little bit about the framing and the way that this works. Um, I am going to throw a couple of questions out to panelists. We have a set of questions that have been prepared in advance, but I'm also going to throw it open to the chat if anybody wants to put a question in there that they're really interested in asking. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to step question through question. Panelists, it does not matter what order you go in. 
Um, but if you just kind of communicate with one another or you kind of raise your hand or just let another panelist know if there's something that you want to build on because you've heard something and you realize you can add to that question, it's pretty organic in how this flows. Um, but we really want to give a number of our panelists the opportunity to kind of share their experience. What I think is really enriching about having you all on this breakout room is that you attend very different schools. And so the experience is unique based on the school that you go and the area that it is and the major that you have or what you're interested in currently exploring. And we really kind of want to share a pretty broad um, kind of flavor of what that college undergrad experience is like both for parents and students. Um, again, the chat will be open if there's anything that you want to clarify. Last year when I was facilitating this, you would start with a question from a student and feel very tailored like that. And then we would hear from our parents. And they're really interested in hearing from like the parent perspective. You know, what does that, so please add on if there's anything further that you want any of the, pal or the panelists to speak to, just let me know as the facilitator and we are going to do that. Um, our planned breakout session it's generally around 45 minutes, but it doesn't have to be a, a hard cutoff right at 45 minutes, but that has been in the past about how long our breakout session tends to last. So other than that, I think that's the framing and kind of the structure and logistics for our breakout room. So I'm gonna go ahead and then open it up for our panelists to please introduce themselves. Please share which college you are attending and where your college is located. And then if you would, please add one great thing that you did over winter break panelists, something fun and exciting you just want to share. I can start. Okay, my, Thanks, name, Hope. Uh, my name is Hope Safai. I go to McDaniel College and it's located in Westminster, Maryland. And over winter break, I went to Morocco. Oh, exciting. My name is Julissa Gago. I go to NYU. It's located in New York City, but right now I'm in London, or right now I'm in France, but it's I'm on the abroad. I'm in London. And over winter break, I went to Belgium and then I saw like the like this the center. And then um I went to France. I'm currently in Paris and I saw like all the markets and then I saw like the New Year's fireworks and everything. That sounds great. Um, my name is Sia. Uh, I go to Hopkins, which is located in Baltimore. And uh, I literally, you guys did really fun things for winter break. I did nothing. I slept. But uh, one fun thing I did was me and my family every year go to the winter lights. Um, like the, and I don't know, it was just something we do every year. So that was really fun. That's awesome, Sia. That sounds actually really nice. <laughs> to get some relaxation in there. Okay, so I'm gonna kick us off tonight and I'm gonna ask one of the uh, first formal questions that we have for our panelists. We can stick with the same order or someone else can jump in on this one. So let's begin with how did your experience at Wooten High School help prepare you for your specific college? And this is kind of broad, whether it's social experiences or some of those skills that you're gonna use in a lot of classes like helpful note-taking, um, whether it's test prep, like what are the things that you can really go back to from your time at Wooten that have helped you have a successful start in undergrad? So I can start. So my college is only has 1800 students undergrad. So it's even smaller than Wooten. So I think socially, um, it was much easier just being exposed to a lot of people at Wooten and meeting people from all different grades, it's kind of like the same. I'd say kind of like high school, it's really easy to know everyone on campus. So within the first week, I was really familiar with like half the school, which is something that I really liked. And academic wise, Wooten prepares you um, through taking notes, just the assignments that we do. I know from like a lot of students that go to my college from even other places in Maryland, just the curriculum that we have and the way that we're taught really prepares you. Um, for tests, especially, even if sometimes it might seem overwhelming that we have quizzes and tests 
honestly, they're just like the exams. Um, Wootens are probably a little harder than the ones that I experienced, but maybe it was because of my intro classes, but I honestly felt very well prepared. I can go next. Um, socially, NYU, well, NYU is a big school in New York, but in London, it's very small because it's like a small group of people. So that group of people, it, it, we live in, the freshmen at least live in one building and you get to know everyone within maybe a day. Like everyone, you get to know everyone. But then the school that we're with that's hosting us is called University Colleges of London. And they have their hu a huge population of students that like we were a part of their student union almost as if we're students there. So they getting involved there is very easy, very fun. And you get to meet people from everywhere. And I mean, when I mean everywhere, I mean everywhere. You like, you completely like submerge yourself inside of everything that they do. I think on a daily basis, I don't really see much Americans except for if I go back to my dorm, to my, like, to go back to my flat. Other than that, I'm surrounded completely by Germans, Russians, uh, Swiss, Australians, South Africans, British people, like the whole time. So, and I think that it's really cool because I really personally like a global population, like a very diverse group. And it's harder for me to be in a smaller, um, pop a smaller group because just because I liked diversity in that sense. And NYU, as we all know, is not that diverse. It really is like a, it's like a PWI as much as they like to preach that it is and it is. Um, academically, I think Wooten set me up pretty good. I think senior year, there's a couple of teachers that I was like, oh, they're like, this is really annoying. Why would you be a sticker on this? And then I got to fresh, I got to NYU and I'm like, oh, okay, I see. Like it's, it, it, it prepared me so much that it's almost easier. Like I've said the words, like this is easier than high school. I think because of also our schedule, it's not like every single day I'm having the same class. Like I'll probably see her next, like two days from now. And note-taking, I've never really been great at note-taking, but I think college really set me up to be really good at note-taking. Um, if you had Mr. Benya, you know, you'll be fine at note-taking. And um, what else? AP classes, I think, prepare you pretty far. I think I, I think we were blessed at Ruin with a great selection of AP courses because certain schools do not have the same AP courses that we have. And I I don't know what it's due to, but I think I think I was set up pretty well. Um, I think that obviously like socially because there's so many people um at Wooten from different backgrounds it it like I guess I I changed a lot from freshman to senior year I became more open I learned like how to talk to people how to make friends and that like helped me a lot when I went to college and also you guys covered a lot of good points so I'm trying to think but um I think uh time management in general is something like you kind of have to get really good at at Wooten because it's it's obviously it's like a really rigorous school there's a lot of good, not competition but there's a lot of amazing people there and getting good at time management was something I worked on throughout high school and then it significantly helped me because in college you are in class less but if you're not on top of it yourself and you're not doing the homework, you're not on top of studying for the quizzes and tests and final exams and everything, you kind of get left behind. And I guess at Wooten, although there are tests and uh, quizzes and all that, it helped me a lot with my TAM management when I came into um, college. Awesome, Sia, thank you. So Max Choi just joined us. He's one of our panelists tonight. Max, would you like to say hello to Breakout Room 2, the awesome Breakout Room 2, and let us know what school you are going to and where it's located? Hey, Mr. Nelson. Good to see hi. you. And hi, panel, our uh, Breakout Room 2. Sorry, I I'm a little late. I just uh, came from a meeting. But my name's Max Choi. Uh, I graduated last year. I currently go to Babson College. Um, so Babson... Uh, is a small college in Wellesley, Massachusetts, just outside of the city of Boston. Um, we are a we are a entrepreneurial focused school, uh, and so uh, Babson's only major is 
business administration, usually students with a entrepreneurial mindset or they're really focused in business. They want to, uh, uh, they, they usually want to attend Babson. And so uh, when we're here, everything is usually thought of with some sort of business acumen. Uh, and uh, just because Babson is, is business restricted, uh, we actually have a lot of other programs like uh, people who are interested in business law or, or accounting and all these other sorts of fields. Or if you want to do, do tech and, and combine with tech business, we share a campus with uh, the Olin College of Engineering. Uh, and so we often work with the uh, Olin College students because they're engineering students and we're business students. And often students go off and, and start their own ventures with the Olin students. Uh, that, that's kind of Babson in a, in a, in a nutshell. Um, are there any like uh, specific questions I should be answering about Babson? Or... We'll probably get to that next. But for right now, we're just sure. going to go like question by question. And so we're set for like the next question then we're just going to move through all panelists and you're just going to kind of share your perspective and your experience at your school based on that question got it so the next question i'm going to ask sia actually helped me think of of something that connects so it might make sense to go with her after i ask but one thing that i remember about when i started my undergrad was i was so surprised with how much time you have when you are not racing you know seven periods every day periods for and then let you know like we build such a fast-paced schedule at Wooten High School and when you go to undergrad that really changes so my question is what is your typical schedule like how has it shifted and what are the big differences between the undergrad schedule and what you experienced in high school uh yeah so obviously I guess uh, in you have like way less classes, obviously. So in terms of like, maybe I would have like, I think my schedule was like three max per day. That was like, and those were like three hours and I was like done for the day or, um, or I'm trying to think, honestly, <laughs> it's been a while since the semester ended. So, but um uh yeah something like that right now we have we have inner session which is basically like a winter semester for a month and you can take classes like pass fail and uh but anyways uh but there's a lot more studying I feel like it's a lot more focused on you because there's way less motivation like for me my parents aren't here like they're not motivating me to study to get good grades like and all that so it's it's a lot more on you and you have to budget out the work you have to be like I will study for this this day I will get this done this day because no one's here to like hold your hand and like professors like they're amazing and helpful when you want to come to them but if you're not doing well and you don't reach out to them like you can't they can't really do anything about it like I guess that's just how I see it so like um obviously like there's a lot more time but I feel like there's a lot more work, at least at Hopkins. So for me, I took actually six classes this semester, which thinking about it, I don't know why. But in the end, um, honestly, looking back, I had so much free time and I was still able to really do everything that I wanted. Yes, I had um like most days four classes but after those classes ended yes I had homework but a lot of it was projects and working on it like little by little um I still had enough time to like be with my friends I really never had to say no to anything to focus on the schoolwork um it's so much easier to just have time for yourself and as Sia said like you have to motivate yourself because no one's there to help you yeah there's like um people you can go to to talk to there's like the wellness center um your professors if you're ever overwhelmed but yeah I think there was a lot more free time but it was a lot more on myself um personally I I definitely think without the seven classes a day thing that it's made your life way easier. I took five classes and so I took 18 credits this semester just because everybody was overachieving and I was like, let me also overachieve. And um, 
that was still easier than Wooten because I personally, I take 9 a.m. So I'm back home maximum 3 p.m. And that was honestly really good for me because I could go back, I could wake up as early as I wanted to. I like personally, I love 8 a.m., 9 a.m. I think it's the best thing personally. It's easier in high school. And you have that, you have what, five hours to study. I don't know how long you're studying for. Next day, you, you, if you have your classes again, it's like spread apart really nicely. So all you have is time. All you have is time. Now in that time, what you choose to do with it is really crucial because you could, because when, oh, when Sia says it's really on you, it is really on you because you don't, it, it's not like um, on Canvas, for example, where like the assignments pop up on the thing. No, you have to go to the syllabus. You have to figure out that assignment yourself. You have to know it when you get to class and then there's an assignment like, oh, pull out your sheet was assigned to you a month ago and everyone pulls it out and you don't know because you didn't look at the syllabus. You're going to feel awful. You're going to feel awful. And one of my one of my recommendations, first day of classes, when you get your syllabus, make a huge Excel spreadsheet, all your assignments, all of them, get them done as early as you possibly can, just because in college, you're, yes, you're focused on school, but let's face it, you're focused on your life as well. So if you can't, if you know already that you can't balance that, set aside three days where you just stay in your flat and you cram everything from here till two weeks. Just because if you know that you can't, I know I can't. So I stayed in my flat for at least four days and I just got everything done <laughs> for the next like three weeks. My roommates thought I was crazy, but I was free. And I was liberated because nobody else will help you. Your mom's not there. Dad's not there, and your teacher definitely doesn't care. They're just paid to be there. Yeah, I'll definitely echo a lot of what uh, the previous panelists have just said. Uh, uh, you are an adult now, and you uh, you are uh, in college on your own. Uh, and so uh, my mom's not here to to hold my hand or to to knock on my door and say, "Max, get off the computer," or or um, uh, and start doing your your math homework or something. Uh, so. Um, it's definitely a lot more independence, uh, but at the same time, a lot more responsibility. Uh, me personally, I'm an 8 a.m. guy. Uh, I get up early and uh, I, I, I love the feeling of, of waking up early. It's a lot of, I know a lot of uh, uh, my former classmates as well as my current classmates would uh, disagree with me strongly on that. Um, but uh, in, in college, you also get to pick uh, the class when you want your classes to be. Uh, or at least at my college, as well as uh, how many classes you want to take, as well, whether you not whether or not you want to uh, overload. So, like at my college, I'm currently doing twenty credits, so because uh, uh, I I love myself and uh, um. But but yeah, it's it's a lot more free will to to really pick how you want your schedule to be, and at the same time, a lot more uh, liberty to, um, liberty and uh, independence as far as how you will manage that schedule. It's awesome. Thank you, Max. I'm going to ask one more question for the panel. And then after this, for everyone else who's in the room, if there's a question you might want to ask, I'm going to open it up after we go through this, uh, the responses to this next question. Um, so here we go. Could you please explain to us what went into making the decision to choose the school that you eventually chose to go to? Were there specific circumstances? Was there something you were really interested? Was the major just really like kind of what did you prioritize that helped you make the decision to go to your school? Okay, I can start. So aside from like scholarships or in general about money, um, something that helped me pick McDaniel was I'm majoring in kinesiology and they have a great kinesiology program. Um, I knew for my future it would help set me up. And in addition, it the classroom sizes, um, it is so easy to make connections with all the professors and just staff in general. So I within my first week, I became an admissions ambassador. So now I work um, in the admissions office. I am going to do research with one of my professors um, it, starting in a few weeks, which is probably a unique experience that not a lot of 
other like large colleges will allow you to um, have um, the staff at my school are just super welcoming. They, you can tell that they really care for their students. The professors truly care. Um, every professor that I've had has always reached out or will respond really quickly are always open to help. So just in general, um, it's been such a supportive group and I'm very happy about my decision. I can answer next. First hope, that is really cool, that research thing. That is really, really cool. Um, for NYU, I've, I, before I moved to Maryland, I was raised in New York and I wanted to go to NYU since I was seven years old. There was really no other college in my mind except for NYU since a kid, that was it. And then before that, I, I'm originally not American. I'm from, I was like raised in France and Cameron. And when I was given the opportunity to go to London, I jumped on it just because I was like, oh my God, I miss my family. I miss blah, blah, blah. I miss a global population and jumping between things. So it was really easy um, choosing that as well. Um, now the connections at NYU are insane, crazy insane connections. I think I've met within just my flat like the floor I've made insane connections and connections that I think will carry me long term forever and I think also like Hope said forming those connections with your professors alone because they've gotten to where they need to be and they are the ones that can help you with almost everything not even just professors in university I feel like professors at Wooten helped me so much like with everything the um, old principal Miss Dr. Bolden loved her loved she was great um I had a couple of teachers at Wooten as well that helped put me onto the, the right track as well and wait where am I where was I going with this um so and then also the, the financial aid NYU is known for giving awful awful financial aid but I was blessed I with really great financial aid so that did become a benefactor and so why I was like oh yeah I'm gonna go I can't, oh, sorry. <clears throat> I can go next. Um, I actually ED'd to Hopkins, ED1, and um, I had a couple, uh, like, I uh, reasons why I did it. Obviously, first, research. I really wanted to get involved in research, and Hopkins is, like, the top-funded college in the nation for research, so that was one of the reasons. Don't, if that actually isn't true, it's it's up there. It's up there. Okay. I don't know. I don't know the stats, but it's definitely up there. And um if and obviously when I visited, honestly, I would say visit a lot of the colleges you're really interested in. Because when I went to Hopkins, it was just different than any other college I went to. I was just talking to people who went there. I was talking to professors, everything. I just felt like I could be there. Like it was really something that I could like do I guess like it was something it was like all these people I was meeting were so nice and like they were so helpful with everything and they seemed like they really enjoyed it there and I was just like I can I can be that like I really saw myself there so I guess um that and then um generally uh the options Hopkins is really flexible if you want to fit on a minor a double major it's super easy to do that because there's no actual um no actual like core requirements so I literally never have to take an English class which I'm very happy about <laughs> and I don't have to take history class where I'm just like okay thank god I I mean other people love that stuff it's not for me <laughs> but so I just it was just had amazing programs research and when I visited it was just absolutely amazing yeah so um I chose Babson primarily because they gave me a, a scholarship and uh uh, as well as it's a very small campus, so there's a lot of professor uh, to student attention. Uh, I think my largest class might have 30 people approximately, which is uh, pretty small for, for a college, but um, I'm able to build really close relationships with my professors that way. Um, and I, I came and visited Babson before I, uh, I, I applied, and, and I, um, something that really intrigued me was that Babson has something called the Foundations of Management and Entrepreneurship course. Uh, where they actually give you funding to run your own business and you actually are paired with the group. Uh, you come up with your own idea and you get to structure yourselves the way you want to structure yourselves. Uh, it's it's a really 
there's a lot of hands-on learning that goes on at Babson uh, and, and they prioritize group work and experience. And those are all skills that I feel that, that are uh, uh, skills that I, I definitely not only uh, need improvement on myself, but I, I thought Babson uh, was, uh, they presented themselves as doing it very exceptionally. Can I just add something, please? Certainly, Hope. Go for it. So something for me that when I was picking what um, college I wanted to go to, I actually applied to a lot of colleges. And something that was kind of holding me back was about the name. Um, you know, just from a student standpoint, seeing a lot of students or like your fellow peers going to a lot of name schools that are so popular I kind of felt like oh I like what are people going to think of me if I go to a school that maybe not everyone knows but after overcoming that and realizing that this is my future and honestly no one is sitting there thinking about oh what school is this person going to um, I chose the school that I knew was the best for me and that regardless of what anyone else thought like their opinion at the end didn't matter. Like do it for yourself. Don't do it to try to impress your peers. Because let's say I, if I knew if I had gone to another school, but if I wasn't enjoying it, then what's the point of me going there? Um, just overcoming that block was probably the hardest thing, but now I'm happier than ever and thriving at the school that I wanted to pick. I think that's great hope, and I appreciate you saying that. I think it's important to keep it in mind. College is a fit, and it's not always just where friends are going or maybe the expectations that come with an institution. It really is about finding the right fit for you. So what I'm going to do is see if there is a question from the audience. Um, so I don't know if the chat is specific to our breakout room, but if anybody wanted to ask a question, if you could please raise your hand. And if not, that's okay. It's a no pressure room. I have some questions ready to go, but I just wanna check and see if any questions from the audience are out there. I have a question. This is Mia, yes. Principal Nelson. Um, okay, go for it. You you all are so impressive. First of all, thank you so much for, for volunteering to do this. You are so mature and so articulate and eloquent. Thank you. I, I My question is this, if you're comfortable sharing, um, did you all only use the college counseling services provided by Wooten or did you also utilize private third party college counseling? Can you speak to that? Thank you for that question, I, I, Mia, whoever so, wants to take it. I can speak to that because um, I utilized, this is this is funny, I, because I knew that the school was in New York and if I wanted to get in, it had to be in New York, there, is, there, there was this New York organization and it's free. This is like, oh my God, I've never given this thought. It's called um, matric Matriculate. It's free. And it is this, like a college support service and they give you a advisor that walks you through every single step of the college application process with you and that's what I had as well my biggest help was mainly the college at the the, the the career center and just myself and just like the regular like you know um common knowledge that I had of it but matriculate if anybody wants to use that and you don't have any like adult to help you with it. I think matriculate was the best because I was assigned um, an advisor. She went to Johns Hopkins actually. And she helped me with, I mean, everything from making your college board account to making your essay, to getting your your CVs, um, everything all up to date, to getting this on, on time, to getting this, 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 to making sure that you apply for scholarships, to making sure that you apply for internships they helped me so much and it's all completely free and i also like, dropped the website because i think that everyone should utilize that as well but yeah i did use a third party thing i didn't have the money to like pay for it obviously i think some people are you know have used third party things that they paid for it, but i just personally i just could not afford that <laughs> yeah. 
you know what's so crazy that you mentioned that I'm literally part of that at my at school Hopkins like I'm part of the matricula program at Hopkins like I'm like uh next semester I'm going to be helping a couple kids through the college process so it's actually really crazy that you mentioned that I'm so glad it helped you um uh yeah I mean at least for me I didn't use any uh I, I referenced a lot to, um, I got a lot of essays from like just the internet, like Hopkins has like something called essays that worked. And also I know a lot of people on the 2027 one and it honestly helped me so much when I was doing my essay. Like I was able to like see what pe got them in and I was able to like, uh, like see what type of perspective they took on when writing their essay and having that variety really helped me out. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I didn't use anything. Do any other panelists want to respond to that question? I hope you can, I saw you on me. Okay, I'll go. Um, I personally can't attest to third party uh, college advisors. Um, I know a couple of friends at ba here at Babson, uh, they use them, they said that uh, for how much they thought they were worth versus for how much they thought they were getting. They didn't think it was worth it. I'm not too en entirely sure of like what company they used, but um, I know personally that uh, uh, MCPS, I'm sure, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I for I'm forgetting the exact name of the program, but MCPS has like a college rep kind of program and it's a partnership with Montgomery College uh, that I'm... Uh, I was just talking to the person, but uh, there was someone, uh, MCPS does have a programs where they actually help you with, uh, they can help you with the college uh, uh, process. And I'm sure the uh, career advisor can also uh, help a lot too. I can I also add something, oh, so sorry. <laughs> add something about the college and career center. I don't know how it runs currently now, but I think also that is like the biggest thing that helped me with the college application process because I didn't pay for a single application fee at all because of the college um, and career center. All the scholarships that, I mean, they, they, have this, they have a huge book of just scholarships just sitting in that room. If you go to that room and you just ask them, can I please borrow this book? They'll give it to you and then you apply for all of them. If you need a scholarship, if you need like if you need to talk to an advisor, if you need to talk to an alumni, if you need to talk to anyone, I think just going into the accounting office and then just talking to, I currently Ms. Carr doesn't work there anymore, but, um, and just talking to all of them, they are, will be like your main, like the main contact that you should go to before you go to like matricula or anything like that, because they will really walk you through it. And then also your teachers as well, because they have been through this with students way before you, so, and you're not going to be a bother to them at all. Um, I was going to say I did have a college counselor. Um, my brother graduated one year before me, so she worked closely with him, too. So I just continued. Um, she really helped with like one on one, especially when writing the essay and finding a lot of the colleges that I applied to. I did end up applying to like 20 colleges, which I kind of regret because at the end of the day, you just go to one. but at the end of the day, it was, it was kind of, okay, I won't say that. It was kind of fun um, just applying and seeing where you get into, but having that one-on-one -on -one support, knowing that she's always there um, really helped me. Thanks, Hope. We have another question from the audience and this one is from Catherine. So Catherine, if you wanna hop off mute. Um, thank you, um, Principal Nielsen, thank you for the panelists um, for sharing your valuable experience. My question is regarding the major. For example, if if a student um, does not know what major to go for, for example, if he or she gets up into the school with art, for example, will he or she be able to switch to a different program in the same university? Have Has anyone of you have such experience? I can go first on this because um, yeah. I'm technically NYU. I'm currently like, it's almost like undecided right now because 
I when I applied, I put journalism down just to have something down because my mom was like, if you apply and you put undecided, that means you don't even know what you want and they're not gonna take you. I said, okay. So I put down journalism. And then I think eventually through my my portfolio, I think they could realize like you don't you want a lot of stuff. Like you don't just want something because I'm very indecisive. And what NYU does is really great is that NYU, you kind of undecided, but you're taking core, it gets like the core curriculum. And then after those two, you're in that for two years. And then afterwards, your junior year, you declare your major. And then you, then you are quickly just in that now. Like it's just, you just transfer it nicely. I don't know how it works for other um, unis, but like for NYU, it's very simple, very straightforward. You're in this for two years. You take classes pertaining to something that you might be interested in. And then after that, you transfer in really nice days, almost like taking community college for two years and then going to a four year afterwards. That's literally in my case, it almost is kind of just like that. Like I'm taking a community college and then I'm just transferring over. The cons to that is that um, one, it doesn't also, it doesn't apply to every school. This just happens to be, I just got lucky with NYU. I had no clue it was even a thing before. And two, the problem is if, because right now I'm taking a bunch of econ classes and like management classes. If in two years from now, I realize I actually don't want to do that. I want to do journalism. Okay, well, that sucks for me because I've been taking econ classes the last two years and then I'm transferring over to journalism, but that actually required me to have taken blank my sophomore year. So now I have to take an extra course or whatnot. So that, that it does get a bit sticky. It's a bit, it depends on your school. But I think yes you can transfer really really nicely in terms of nyu uh i think actually i can i can help a little bit on this question because i actually switched my major um i switched i applied chemistry because i really liked it in school but like i had no clue like and i got in for chem and everything and i literally just sent an email over the summer i was like i want to do Right now, I'm a chemical and biomolecular engineering and computer science major, and so I'm double majoring, and um, I literally just sent an email to my advisor, and I was like, hey, can I just switch my major from chemistry to chem- chem- uh, chemical and biomolecular engineering, and they were like, sure, and then my major was changed. Like, it was really easy. My only thing is that Hopkins, you cannot switch into biomedical engineering, like, un- under any circumstances, like, that's like, that's like the major at Hopkins. You have to get in with it. And also if you're taking engineering, same with Jalissa, if you take, if you're like taking like arts classes or film classes for your first year or two years, and then you try to switch into like engineering, it'll be very difficult to do that. So with engineering, they make you declare right now, but you can still like switch and everything. Um, But for Krieger, which is the arts school of arts and sciences, all of them are undeclared. Like you only declare after your first year. And even then you can add on a double major. You can add on, a, it's really easy to add on minors. That's what I really like about Hopkins. It's very flexible in that way. But yeah, uh, really it's, I think it's pretty easy to switch your major here at Hopkins. I applied as a biomedical sciences I think but um, now I'm on the kinesiology path so it's super easy Um, at my school you have to declare your major after the second year um, by the latest but I'm gonna I think next week I think I'm gonna declare my major so if I ever want to change it I have two years too so it's really easy Um, I don't think it really matters what you apply with especially at my school or uh uh, here at Babson, um, so Babson, like I said before, we only do business majors. Only business majors are off- offered. Uh, me personally, I would like to go into uh, more of something with a legal acumen. So what Babson allows you to do is uh, with your business major, they allow you to either concentrate or dual concentrate in some sort of area. So for example, uh, I know some people who are concentrating in both entrepreneurship and finance uh me personally i'm concentrating in legal studies and so i'm hoping to uh from here go to um uh grad school for law and get my jd and so uh despite babson only having one major there's still a lot of flexibility as far as uh what you could do because in business there's so many fields 
Uh, but if, uh, if I'm thinking from the perspective of a senior in high school who's applying to college, and I don't know exactly what I want to do, and if I don't have a definitive interest in business, or if business, business isn't something that's my forte, then, uh, but even if I have a slight, you know, interest in it, I would still consider Babson and, you know, maybe look into uh, to some of the programs because uh, uh, Babson surprisingly has lots of flexibility. And a uh, worst case scenario, uh, if you do uh, attend Babson and you decide that you want to uh, transfer out, surprisingly, uh, um, we have writing resource centers here that will actually help you with the transfer process. Uh, so, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of flexibility at my college. Something I would say about all colleges in general is if you have like a theme in when you're applying. So if all your if a lot of the classes you took at Wooten, if a lot of the extracurriculars, honors, awards you do. So, for example, if they're all STEM related or have like a general theme, pick your major. If even if you don't know it, pick, I'd recommend picking your major, something in that, because the colleges want to see see that you're like if you're invested in something, you continue, you work hard at it. And even if you want to change completely to like from a bio major to a history major, um, you can do that after you get in. But when you're applying, if you don't know, instead of putting undecided, rather put something that matches. Awesome. Thank you, Hope. All right, let's try this one out for size. I think this is going to be quick. Tell us about either your last semester schedule or what the current schedule going into this. What's your day going to be like based on the schedule that you have? I can start. My last semester schedule, lovely, amazing. I loved it. Woke up 9 a.m., 9 a.m. to 10, 15, 10, 15 to... And then I had no, I had 10.30 to, um, took in all classes are like an hour 15. So, so whatever. And then that was like Mondays and Wednesdays. NYU London doesn't have any Friday classes. So I have no Friday classes, which is amazing. And then uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yes. Tuesdays and Thursdays are my longest days, which literally means I just end up being 45 instead of um, anything later. Still 9 a.m. So I'm 9 a.m. every day. Every other week I have on Tuesdays this um two credit class that adds up to the 18th major. For my next semester class credits, I honestly don't know what that schedule looks like yet. I'm really too scared to even just open the portal and see just because I signed up for classes two minutes late like two minutes after I had it opened, which at NYU is deadly because the second that it's open within the millisecond, everyone signed up for classes and the classes are gone. And I just kind of signed up for whatever was open. So I don't really know what my second semester thing looks like. But I recommend doing 8 a.m.s, 9 a.m.s. Just do it. Uh, My schedule, well, I'm kind of like hope in the way that like my first semester, I went a little crazy uh not like I took like 17 credits of like pure hard stem classes so I took like python physics chemistry then physics lab and chem lab and then I took I took a um a class on biomolecular materials which is like pertaining more with my major and um it was a lot but in terms of the actual classes it wasn't horrible it was a lot of the work I had to do outside of class, especially because for Python, it was like a flipped learning classroom, uh, which is like you learn all of it outside of class, which I don't know about that method, but it was a fun class. It was a fun class either way. But um, yeah, my next my next semester is going to be a lot more chill. I'm taking a film class, which is something I'm, I've am i always been interested in. Um, and then I'm taking uh, physics two, chem two um oh I'm blanking uh physics two chem two uh linear algebra and differential equations and and then chem lab I think that's it it's it's it and chem lab is like a one credit class three hours per per week so it's like not as bad um and I don't know I signed up for a 9 a.m I'm a little scared <laughs> 
I'm not the most of a morning person. I'm not the best at it, but I was able to get through it in high school. So I figure it'll, it'll transfer, it'll transfer over. Um, for me, since I had the six classes, I had three on Monday, Wednesdays, and then on Fridays, I had four, which Fridays, a lot of my friends were like, you have class? And I was like, yeah, I have four of them. So that wasn't always the most enjoyable, but it made me productive, like I said. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I had two classes. Um, so on Tuesdays and Thursdays, it was more chill and I was able to do the work that maybe I was stressed about on the Monday, Wednesdays. Um, I don't like the classes that I took was like a seminar we had. Um, I took a like high level Spanish, um, kinesiology, psych, yoga, and then I'm in the honors program. So we had a symposium, which was just a lecture every Friday. So it was pretty busy. And next semester, I am taking just as many classes, which it's okay. I'm ready for it. <laughs> so my schedule last semester, uh, I had 8 a.m. every day, like I said. Uh, I would wake up early in the morning, uh, go get uh, breakfast at our dining hall, which uh, because we're such a small campus, everything's so close in proximity, and uh, really the walk isn't, walks aren't too far. Uh, I took a, uh, first our Foundations of Management and Entrepreneurship course, um, and then I would have a nice gap in between the day. So my next class, it would be from 8 to 9.30 a.m., they're 90-minute classes, and then my next class wouldn't be until 3 p.m., uh, and then that that uh, on Mondays and Wednesdays, I have uh, my uh, FME courses, the Foundations of Management and Entrepreneurship, as well as our business, um, uh, our business law courses at uh, um, at 3 p.m. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would have our writing classes as well as our uh, what we call Foundations of Critical Inquiry. There's different sections of the FCI classes where uh, you really get to explore some sort of different social topic. Uh, you practice your debate skills and, and have a lot of discussions and seminars. Uh, you can get to teach a, teach a, a lesson, um, teach a lesson for a class about some sort of topic. Uh, so mine was on environmental injustice. Um, and, and yeah, that was, that was kind of my first semester into college. At that, that time, I was still kind of exploring uh, different the, uh, the different activities and, and, and whatnot. Uh, but even if you enter into Babson, uh, uh, and this kind of touches, I saw a question in the chat about extracurriculars. Even when you enter into Babson, there's so much flexibility for uh, first years to, to get involved and to even get officer positions. Yeah. Are Thanks. we going to answer that question in the chat next? Uh, you don't have to. Let's just keep the after school activities or yeah, after school activities, your college activities. Let's just keep that question open. So Hope has shared some of hers, like Frisbee, Max just chimed in, but let's keep uh, talking about what activities are available for you all. Um, I go. You can go. Sorry, you can go. No, no, go. Come. I, I'm so, I have a thing too. Like, I have to pull up my CV. Like, just go. No, you're all good. Um, yeah, actually, uh, going on what Max said, I was really scared that, like, oh my God, Hopkins, like, there's so many smart people from across across the world that are like so much better than me and everything I thought I would literally be having to I heard like, like horror stories and like you'd have to compete and have 10 rounds of applications for every club it's not like that you can you can basically join anything it's really nice I um before the year even started um I got an officer position for a first year class rep of like one of my majors, Chem BE, which is Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering. Um, they're like student department that works directly with the faculty and everything. So I got a position there. Um, and that was, it's just really nice being able to, um, and then also, I'm trying to think, I joined matriculate, which is, um, I had in high school, I did, a, I did a lot of clubs around tutoring and uh, volunteer work. So I joined that and that's been really cool. Um, and I loved, honestly, 
I kind of liked the college process a lot, like writing the essays. And so it was really nice being able to like share that. I know, I know it sounds a little weird. <laughs> I know it sounds a little weird, but I did get an ED. So I didn't have to apply to as many colleges. I applied to like only 11. So yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like horrible, but um, yeah, I joined that. Um, I'm also in another club. Um, I'm trying to think I'm in another club where we're building, we're literally building a race car, like, an off-road vehicle and we're literally like racing it in national competitions which um I which is like really really cool like I literally like help make the parts and everything I, I thought that was really cool um and honestly um at Hopkins we have something called SIF which is student involvement fair every semester which I really liked so you can basically see all the clubs that are there and you can basically talk to anyone people basically like want all these people to join they're like please please join my club because it's just and there's so many opportunities like I um uh everything that I was able to do in high school and that I've always wanted to do I'm doing here which I really enjoy um in terms of here and then I so this the thing I'm a part of UCL again is the University Colleges of London the school that NYU is partnered with so I'm a part of UCL's African and Caribbean Society. I'm a part of UCL's French Student Society. I'm a part of LSE, which is London School of Economics. It's another school that is within this big bubble of like London, like University of London schools. I'm a part of London School of Economics French Society as well. And then NYU in London has a podcast that I actually came up with the idea for that I'm starting. And I'm starting this podcast. And then along with that, I also work in London I have I do um sales and marketing with this company here that I stumbled upon literally just by accident because I was trying to go to the bathroom and but it's really flexible and they go really well with my hours and then also not even just that like for fun what do we do here what do we do here oh London is so big like between classes if you're ever just bored go to like the big bang for like two hours and then go back to class or on um what else there's such a huge there's so many opportunities for networking like I know we're not talking about outside of school but like just like networking just in general just for like whether it be making friends or why not because the the culture of London here when it comes to university is very like what's next what's next what's next so like how are we gonna get money how are we gonna get money from this how are we gonna get money from this but there is a lot of opportunity as well where you can just like meet people and just like be, be, like make, establish a nice connection without it having the pressure of like this is a work connection this is a work person that like, you just talk to and you can go out with them you grab a pint and grab a go to like the movies or go go to the arsenal game which you've done way too many times um so yeah, so I think uh, the big, huge important thing is in college is because you have so much time, you have to know what to do with it, but you have to also remember that you're a person and you value personal connections. And if you don't make those personal connections and just spend your whole days like in your dorm, just looking at a book all day, you're not making any friends, you're not having any fun. And then it's just gonna be a waste of a couple thousand dollars when you could have just been outside, so. Actually, like adding on to what Jalissa said, I I like obviously London is London. <laughs> I live in I live in Baltimore, and I really like that's like the city feel a lot. I've had every single not every single weekend, but like a lot of the weekends out when I really just want to chill, like me and my friends, we've been hitting up like weirdly enough bookstores and record record shops and just we just go and we like explore what's around there and just like it's really really nice to be able to just get out of campus for a change and just like do something fun come back obviously in our harbor um we're also making a point to visit more restaurants and stuff like that just like that's like that's like one other thing I do out of it's just like really cool to be able to like come go out and like come back in and like all that sort of stuff Another awesome. thing, if you do study abroad, you can go anywhere within a, three days. So like for like Thanksgiving break, we had like four days off because that's not a thing in the UK. We went to Morocco for fun, just for like those four days. The tickets are literally $40 round trip. And then you go back home. Then in like March, we're going for a three-day weekend to 
uh, Amsterdam. Like, you're a person, like, please go outside. Like, college, yes, like, you paid for it. So, also, like, get good grades because you paid for it. But also, like, live and go outside because you're just going to, like, you're just going to hate it. You're just going to be a flaw. I love listening to all of the things that you all do. <laughs> it's great. Um, so we are down to about our last 10 minutes of our session tonight. Just keep that in mind for um, responses. And we do have, it looks like a hand raised. So I'll turn it over to Gina to ask a question. Hi, so um, I was wondering, so when people major in like one subject, but then they say how they have like three to six other classes, are these classes um just like filler classes like you take in high school where you can take a language and history or are they like courses that will help you in your major? Thank you for that question. That's a great question. So at my school, we have kind of like Wooten, I guess. I, I don't even remember if there was required classes. I guess it was like math, English, but at my school. So for January, since January 1st, right now I've been back at school I mean now right now I'm at home but we have like mandatory classes so for the honors program the like one of the classes you have to take is that and then there's like two language classes you have to take so some of them include that and majority of them are your um major classes but there is still room to take like elective classes if you want um no one's really stopping you um it's very it's highly recommended that you do take it but a lot of them are are for your major or required um for me personally all the classes i'm taking are required courses there's not a single filler course except for that two credit course that i'm taking which is literally food and culture in london like it's just a food and culture class in london that i'm just taking just so i can have an extra credit so I, I can like try to graduate early, but as for me, all the classes I'm taking, I have to take. I can go next. Uh, yeah, uh, for, at least for engineering, uh, I don't have any core requirements at Hopkins that everyone needs to take, but you do have a lot of requirements to graduate. So like the major requirements, like like next semester, I'm taking like one class like for me I guess but like usually um I you have a lot of requirements especially in engineering uh that you have to take like at least even in my major like you have to take basically everything like you take math you take physics you take um chemistry you take bio you take basically every type of class so um, but I would recommend taking like like classes that like are just for you just so you don't lose sanity <laughs> I can attest to specifically just how uh, Babson does it with the, the business majors. So all the classes are are really thought of with some sort of business acumen or, or they usually, they call it here, entrepreneurial thought and action. Uh, that's their little marketing acronym that they have for my college. But um, yeah, so each class you're really thinking of with the business mindset and how like what you're learning in the class uh, connects to business or connects to uh, economics or um, uh, r really like most classes are like that and even like the requirements uh, would really pertain. Um, a lot of the requirements that we do have or there's very few requirements and then you take um, quite a bit more electives than you think. Uh, so there's a lot more electives for you to, to get be flexible to, uh, to pertain to your own interests. Uh, Was I muted this entire time? No. Okay. Just right Sorry. there at all. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, classes. Um, uh, so should, yeah, there's there's a lot of classes that you can take to pertain to, to more interests than just business. Yeah, I just want to close up by saying also, I, think, I don't think anyone's taking any filler classes just because you're paying for all those classes. So the whole point of college is to go through this as fast and as cheap as possible. So there's really no need to take any further classes because you just want to get out of there and then you have to pay for every additional class. So unless you're taking the class because it really entertains you and it pertains to your um, 
your requirements and your graduation and your personal interest because there's no need to take further classes. Thank you, panelists. Okay, so this is gonna be our last question for the evening. So I'd like for you all to think back to when you were students walking the hallways of Wooten High School. And now that you are in the midst of your first year studying at college, what is one piece of advice that you would impart to you? Um, for me, it would be that it's going to be okay. So like I said earlier, a lot of my college decision and like picking where I was going to go, I was just scared about what other people were going to think. But now that I'm there, like, honestly, just thinking about it, I'm like, why did I ever care that much about what other people would think? Like, even after the first week at college, I was like, I know this is what makes me happy. And I'm glad that I didn't go to the other colleges I was thinking about. Um, I would tell myself, like, don't worry, it's all going to be okay. The like beginning college was hard, but that was just hard for everyone. It's because it's a new environment. Um, you don't really have friends, but and like you're away from home for the first time, maybe for a long time. And that was very difficult. But after I got past like that one month, I'd say, um, like I enjoy going back and just knowing that I was gonna be okay would have been very relieving. Yeah, just to add on to what Hope said, one, that it's going to be okay, and then two, the college application process does not define you at all. It's not the end of the world. I think especially during our season of like applying for schools, the uh, college application process showed to me that it was so random that it's literally never personal. It is never personal. Like, I, I know for a fact everyone, like, my year thought UMD was, like, an easy, like, in. And then all of a sudden, UMD is not accepting people that we thought would have gotten in. <laughs> and then I saw people get into schools that I didn't think they could get into or not get into schools that I thought for a thousand percent that they would have gotten into. And then I originally even wasn't going to apply to NYU at all because I was like, oh, my God, you've had your whole life set up for this moment. But if it lets you down, you're going to be crushed. And I got in and but there's like there's people that applied with way better statistics than me easily a thousand percent and they didn't get in and so that when I showed that when I saw that I was like the college application process is so random it is never ever ever personal and it really just does not define you at all it's never personal and at the end of the day it's going to be okay because wherever you end up is where you're supposed to end up if it, if, you, if it wasn't meant for you, it just was not meant for you. There's scholarships that I applied to that I did not get. And I maybe cried for a week straight because I didn't get the scholarship. But then when one door closes with the college application process, trust me, another one's going to open. It's going to be way better. And like, if I had succumbed to all the thoughts that I was having back then, I don't think I would be, I would have been where I am right now. I would have never... I wouldn't have been happy. I would have just been depressed the whole time and been thinking, what if, what if, what if, and then just been doubting myself. But like wherever you get into, if you get waitlisted to your dream school, you don't get in, blah, blah, blah. Trust me, this not apply to you. It's not, it's not personal. It's never personal. It's not a reflection of who you are as a person. It's just a reflection of whoever read your, your essay that morning. So. Uh, I would say, um, one thing I really struggled with coming to campus was I, um, I live like, I mean, Baltimore like an hour away. So, um, at least from here, um, one thing I did still struggle with was a lot of my friends, we went across the country, but a lot of them went to UMD and it was like a little difficult, like seeing them all at UMD together. And then I'm like completely like far away like I'm in some other place and obviously like I come and see them but it doesn't really look the same I guess so I think one thing I really had to like struggle with and I like learned and I'd give advice to my younger self is like it's like you will be fine like maintain the friendships that you want to maintain other friendships if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out it wasn't meant to be I guess that's one thing I would say um I 
yeah if it's not meant to be it's not meant to be if it is it is you'll still and like maintain the friendships you want to maintain but you're not gonna have all the friends you have right now you're probably like going through your life like you're not gonna have them and I guess that sucks in a way you're put there's you're gonna have tons of friends where like just every year you're like oh my god what's up like hey like how's it going but like you're not gonna have them like every single day and that's something I really miss about high school is being able to see like the same people and over and over and like I have to and we have to like put the effort into maintaining those friendships but it's okay if some of them just don't work out like that's life I guess I noticed it's eight fifteen, so uh, I'm just gonna give some a quick piece of advice that uh um my English teacher told me back at Wooten, Mr. Peck. Uh, he said, "Don't and un- underestimate how smart uh, you actually are," uh, and I will leave it at that. <laughs> and that is great advice <laughs> to receive on a final note. So that brings us through our hour together. May I just say to all of our panelists who have joined us tonight, Hope, Sia, Jalissa, and Max, thank you so much for coming back to tell us about your experience in college. Please continue to stay in touch with me and give me updates. I just can't wait to hear about all of the amazing things that you accomplish. And I just wanna say to all of you, you make us very proud. So keep up the great work. Um, And to everybody who came out this evening, please know um, our session has been recorded. So if someone else would like to see what was discussed and what was shared, that will be an opportunity. But I want to thank you all very much for your time this evening. I hope you picked up some great pieces of advice that are going to serve you very, very well. And so uh, have a wonderful evening, everyone. And thank you for coming out to our meeting. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate you all coming out. That's it was a real that's a 